a few a couple of years ago, I did a, a mindful photography course, and I remember the the practitioner on there saying, "I don't know where it came from the quote, but it's about being either a, say, a sage on the stage or a guide by your side." And I think work of teenagers, you're very much a guide by the side. You may have the knowledge and the experience and the, the skills to deliver that particular activity, but you're not in that I'm going to stand here and tell you step by step what to do because I am the expert. You are very much by, by their side, facilitating the activity, um, stepping in in a kind of a teaching role when where is needed, but also stepping back to work alongside them to do to kind of decide what works or how to problem solve a little bit of the activity if somebody's struggling with a bit. Um, and I think kind of in terms of planning activities and ideas of things to do with them, quite often I will I will ask, you know, it is that kind of asking young people for their opinion, asking young people what is it that would engage them in in whatever it is we're doing. So when I in my previous role, I used to work for a, an international tree collection and trying to engage teenagers with trees, you know, initially is quite daunting and can be quite challenging. But just asking, you know, asking young people what they would like to do what would make them interested in trees running kind of focus groups very quickly came out they wanted to do bushcraft style activities but they wanted to do it to prove to themselves that they were good enough and they had the skills and they could cope rather than prove to anybody else they just wanted to prove to themselves that they could do it and from that we just then expanded into you know we, oh, we could do we could do natural balms and natural healing remedies and um, foraging and cooking and camp craft. And yes, we did lots of practical conservation because that was part of that project. And it ended up as part of that project, working with lots of young people and some adults to actually build our own outdoor classroom. So it's, it's, it was, but all of that involved listening to young people and asking young people what it was they would like to do and how they could kind of engage with that collection, providing suggestions and providing kind of also guidelines and, and boundaries and restrictions of what we couldn't do, but just really kind of co-creating activities with them, I suppose, really. Yeah, that that co-creation is vital. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't think to presume that you know exactly what a group of adults need. And in the same way, yeah, uh, you should view them as as mm. developing adults and they they have their own they have their own skills and abilities and points of view that they're bringing to it and we really need to reach out and seek to understand first before i say stepping onto the stage and just lecturing on a on a particular subject yeah and i think this quite often as well with young people no, particularly if they're, they're the older teens, they have a lot of life experience themselves and could quite well be more skilled than me in certain things. And I've been a, in my kind of working role when working with groups, I always kind of ask that we have, if they're coming from an organisation, that some of their members of staff or volunteers come with the group so they can see those kind of authority figures in a different light. And I know I've had examples where we've maybe worked with some challenging young men from a local school who have always been seen as the trouble causers, the ones at risk of exclusion, who suddenly, if they've come out with their teacher, who might have worked with them for several weeks, suddenly the young man who does know how to light a fire is the expert, and the teacher suddenly isn't the expert and has to be taught by the young person. And that's re a really interesting power dynamic change. Um, and the young person you know, excels and loves sharing their skills and helping others out but suddenly they are yeah they are the expert which is a really really nice change yeah it's, it's something that you come across particularly well in the outdoors because not a lot of adults are, are comf comfortable and competent in the outdoors so it's so when so when a, a child or a young adult kind of re starts building a skill set outdoors it it instantly becomes more valuable to them to grow and learn is that it's a blank slate with mm. um we're starting a new skill and everything else that everyone is starting at the same level as you and it's also yeah. like you get a chance to start again unlike with something like i don't know reading or what or mathematics that's kind of 
you're kind of still dealing with um the the judgments that were made to you like 10 15 years ago when you first started school yeah you're right no and i think this is that yeah you're not you're not playing catch up you are all trying to you know, learn something new at the same time and in a different way i think the outdoors is a great space for enabling young people have different learning styles to really excel and because it's not somewhere you can particularly learn things by rote you it's it's much more about experiential learning and much more practical based so i know i've worked with several young people who have struggled academically but actually in the outdoors they have really really flown and to the point where they have now gone in, back into you know, kind of moving on to academic careers, into universities or into you know, apprenticeships, et cetera, that are outdoor based. It could be forestry based or game management, but because they've, they've had the opportunity to see, to recognize their own potential, I suppose is what it is. And being surrounded by people have also recognized that potential where, as if they'd kind of gone into that much more academic type career, they would have struggled if they'd have got there at all. I think also the outdoors, you said about being a clean slate, it's also a clean space in that there is no, it's, I think it's very hard in the outdoors to create a space that has a power imbalance. We all sit, generally sit in circles around a campfire and circles are great kind of community type spaces where there's nobody pushed into corners. Everybody is an equal part in that group. There's not really anywhere to hide behind. There's no desk to hide behind. Or when I used to work in youth clubs, more the, the nervous youth workers would hide behind the coffee bar. There isn't that physical barrier. You are all there. Um, and there's no walls to trap you in. It's a very just open space that allows you to breathe and allows you to take a step back out of the group if you're feeling a bit threatened or anxious. It's a space you can watch from, from, the, from the distance should you wish to, but then easily step back in. So I think, yes, as well as being a clean slate, it is that, it is that yeah, safe space non-judgmental space as well which the outdoors does so well